Welcome home and welcome to Sweeter Than Honey. Will you pray with me? God, would you continue to guide us and lead us and help us to see who you are. Help us to know you, help us to feel you, and help us to experience you. We thank you for loving us. In Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen. God's words for today come from Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 1 through 12. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 1 through 12. We will read from the NRSV. Please carefully follow along and hear the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the drought. Judah mourns in her gates languish. They lie in gloom on the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem goes up. Her nobles send their servants for water. They come to the cisterns. They find no water. They return with their vessels empty. They are ashamed and dismayed and cover their heads. Because the ground is cracked, because there has been no rain on the land, the farmers are dismayed. They cover their heads. Even the doe in the field forsake her newborn fawn because there is no grass. The wild asses stand on the bare heights. They pant for air like jackals. Their eyes fail because there is no herbage. Although our iniquities testify against us, act, O Lord, for your name's sake. Our apostasies indeed are many, and we have sinned against you. A hope of Israel is savior time and of trouble. Why should you be like a stranger in the land, like a traveler turning aside for the night? Why should you be like someone confused, like a mighty warrior who cannot give you help? Yet you, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Do not forsake us. Thou, thus says the Lord concerning this people, Truly they have loved to wonder. They have not restrained their feet, and therefore the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. The Lord said to me, Do not pray for the welfare of this people. Although they fast, they do not hear their cry. And although they offer burnt offering and grain offering, I do not accept them. But by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence, I consume them. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In this news, we hear in the news in our world today, we hear a lot about the drought that has been happening with the recent heat wave across the country and actually all over the world. But to be honest, none of us have ever really, really experienced a real drought where there is literally no water. And today we encounter a passage that addresses a severe drought and its spiritual implications on the people of Judah. The lack of rain and resulting famine in our passage today uh, brings about great suffering to the land, leading the people to cry out to God for help. First, we can see that the drought has caused devastation upon the people of Judah. The first six verses describe the dire situation in Judah due to the prolonged drought. The distress is so severe that the people of Judah are depicted as mourning, with their heads covered in shame and their cries being heard all over the land. The nobles and wealthy citizens send their servants to fetch water, but even they return empty-handed, as no water is to be found. The once fertile land has become parched and desolate, and the people are weakened from hunger and despair. From a land flowing with milk and honey now has become desolate. Mm. It would seem like the prosperity of the land was not of the land, but from God. The blessings and fruitfulness was from God. The passage emphasizes the severity of the situation by mentioning that the doe in the field forsake her newborn fawn because there is no grass. This indicates that even the natural order has been disrupted by the drought, resulting in animals abandoning their young due to the scarcity of food and water. And in the second half, we see Jeremiah's intercession and God's response. Verses 7-9, through nine, Jeremiah intercedes on behalf of the people, praying to God and acknowledging the sins of the nations. He acknowledges that they have strayed away from God's ways and have become guilty of their own iniquities. Despite their cry for help, the passage suggests that their prayers might not be genuine repentance, rather a desperate plea for relief from the consequences of their disobedience. So we ask ourselves, when we repent, why do we do it? Is it because we are genuinely sorry for what we have done? Or is it because we are afraid of the punishment? God's response in verse 10 through 12 reveals that he is not swayed by insincere prayers or outward displays of mourning. He sees through the hypocrisy and tells Jeremiah not to pray for the people's welfare. God declares that he will not listen to their cries, and he warns Jeremiah that the people's spiritual condition has reached a point of no return. The consequences of their actions are inevitable, and the judgment of drought and famine will not be averted. Overall, Jeremiah 14, 1-12 portrays a solemn picture of the consequences of sin and disobedience. 
the drought and famine serves as tangible manifestations of God's displeasure and a call for the people to recognize their transgressions and turn back to Him in genuine repentance. The passage emphasizes the importance of sincerity in seeking God and underscores that empty ritualistic prayers will not bring about relief from judgment. It also highlights the necessity of heeding God's warnings and following God's ways to avoid the devastating consequences of disobedience. Yes, there are consequences to our sin, but God does not want us to return out of fear or evasion of punishment. He wants us to return because we love Him. He wants us to return because we realize how we have hurt God through our disobedience. So let us ask Jesus to give us a genuine, repentant heart, so that we may return to God genuinely and truthfully. Let's pray. God, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for being with us. Continue to guide us and love us. Continue to show us. Continue to change our hearts. Continue to make us genuine and true in light of your presence. We thank you for loving us. In Jesus Christ, and we pray. Amen.